Hi, I'm Scott from Six Points Woodworks, and this is the story of a complete boat building novice constructing a 41 foot trawler yacht in the backyard of our upstate New York home. Now, this is a blue water cruiser designed to cross oceans and take two people comfortably anywhere in the world that they want to go. This is the Sea Dreamer Project. And this is a good example of what we talk about in boat building where it's systems built on systems because what we're really doing is getting prepared to install the framing members that will support the bulkhead at station 26. But before we can do that, we need to make sure all the frames leading up to station 26 are plumbed and square and in their final position. Before we can do that, we need to make sure the transom is rock solid so we can build off that. And in order to make that solid, we need to have that planked up. So what we've done is we've put our first layer of white oak planking up the transom. Now, remember, this is a composite plank tall, which means we're gonna do a layer of traditional three quarter inch white oak planking, followed by a couple layers of plywood, and then uh, fiberglass and epoxy later on. So we've planked up the transom with full length pieces as directed by our YouTube viewers. They are glued and screwed into position, that's solid. And now we can move to start plumbing and squaring up our frames and then we'll install some temporary longitudinals to hold things in position. And then we can get to our framing for station 26 to support the plywood bulka that's gonna go there.
we're just using these stop locks that we made up um, of the space between the frames down at the floor timbers that we already squared up. And now we just go up and make sure that all the frames maintain that same distance all the way up and then attach with these pine stringers. And really all this would be unnecessary if I would just wait and put all the frames on the keel. And then we could use these stringers to be braced off the bow stem and the transom. But, you know, as we stall for time for our engine room, in order to build this bulkhead at Station 26 effectively, we really need these frames to be squared up and secure. And plus, to be honest with you, it's kind of neat to see it take shape and how rigid this really is, just with these little pine stringers on here. So, can't imagine what it's going to be like once we get all the uh, build stringers on and the chine and then the planking. My goodness. So we're here at our new sawmill vendor's place to check out their operation, um, hopefully get a chance to operate their mill, and it should give us a good idea of what it takes to cut these large pieces of wood that we're going to need for the planking on a relatively small mill. This is a very mom and pop operation, but the customer service is outstanding. The quality of the cut and the wood is excellent, so I'm really looking forward to it. So let's go check it out. Deb Mancuso, and the company is DM Enterprises. Okay, you sir? I'm John. All right, John. I've had a few people ask why DAM, and I have told them because of the chicken farm, it's like the damn chicken farm. <laughs> <laughs> um, how long have you been doing this for? Mm -hmm. We started in the, sp in the spring, maybe well, February, something like that, yeah. with the old sawmill. Why to a bigger one? Was the demand? The, the other one would only do a 24 inch diameter bug and just the logs that we get around the woods here we were cutting squeezing were, to get it in yeah we were always trimming with a chainsaw to get it to fit mm -hmm. always been fascinated with it and always wanted a sawmill i mm -hmm. never it, finally I, i'm there i guess i got one <laughs> yeah. it used to it used to break my heart some of the we cut a lot of firewood oh yeah we cut up some nice stuff that should yeah. be sawed into lumber at least now we can do it How is it working together, husband and wife? How's that dynamic? Very good. Yes. I just it's, listen to what she tells no. me. <laughs> no, we've, we've, we've learned to work together. It seems like you guys work together well. I mean, like, right. I, I, I've had my wife come out and help me sometimes with our, our project, you know, and sometimes, you know, there's a little tension there because you're like, hey, me, hey, me that thing. No, 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 that thing, you know, and yeah. it can get tense, and especially when you're trying to hustle. <coughs> right. But you guys right. seem to. Yeah, we go at it slow and. It, it takes a lot of the stress out of it, you know, and just work at it slowly. You know, a lot of people like myself who have thought about getting a sawmill, you know, if they have woodlands in their own and they want to, I mean, what would you tell somebody who wanted to get a sawmill? Maybe not necessarily to go into business, but for their own cutting. I mean, would you say, I mean, do you go like with this? Woodweiser. You like that company? Oh, uh, yes. But we, we also got the um, auto feed on it yeah. because it was, it did have originally have a hand crank and that was cumbersome your speed wasn't consistent and then you know your downstroke was a little faster than right all right, all right, all right. And, and you could see that in the wood you could see a little variation in the where the saw blade marks are <laughs> What's the learning curve? Because this is not just about laying a log on there and start slicing it. I mean, you are leveling, turning, um, calculating. There's, you know, there's math and geometry going on here. I mean, what's the learning curve to, if somebody was just getting started? I mean, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, YouTube has helped us out a lot.
If um, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, if they wanted to learn more about your company, to contact you, how would they get a hold of you? How would they? We're on Facebook. You? You're on Facebook. Dam Enterprises. D A like. D A M. My initials actually. I like it. And I, he also does welding. We also have you know, the chicken farm, and so it's a whole bunch of stuff. Cool. Well, I appreciate you having me out here. It was a lot of fun. Yes. Very yeah. informative. Glad you came. It was great to see how the process went. And now we've got a few hundred more feet to me. And this is the difference between woodworking and boat building. You know, in, in boat building, the plans say, you know, build a bulkhead at station 26, but there's no real details on how to build that bulkhead. You know, it's not just a matter of slapping up a few sheets of plywood. Um, there's some considerations to be had here, uh, like the deck beams do not are not flush with each frame. So that means that there's going to need to be a nailer on each frame for that plywood to attach to. Should you install the plywood horizontally or vertically? If so, how do those sheets of plywood attach to each frame. Remember, all this stuff that we see here is just temporary bracing. That's all going to come out. So our plan is to install our first layer of plywood horizontally. So we're going to install a couple of nailers that are going to run basically down the middle of the boat here and attach to our floor timbers down low and the deck beams up high. Um, they are going to be about seven feet in from each edge, which will allow us to overlap our plywood coming from both sides uh, so our seams don't line up. And then we, uh, that will allow us uh, the uh, extra to cut to fit on each edge because remember the frames are angled and sloping. Now these nailers are, go are going to be bedded and bolted into each floor timber and then temporarily attached to each deck beam. We have an issue to work out down the road as far as how we're going to have access to this aft cabin. And I'm not sure if I want to put that stairway here or on the sides, but we'll work that out later. So I don't want to bolt and bed into this without knowing exactly how we're going to proceed. I have a feeling once both layers of plywood are up that we're going to uh, probably make uh, similar to like when you're framing at a house and you do a window, there's going to be a header and allow for that access a little bit wider. You know, it's gonna have to be wider than what we have here. So now we're just taking some measurements to uh, mill up some timbers so that we can notch it out and install it to each member. So I had to take out the temporary bracing in order to access uh, the bottom of these uh, nailers so that I could get a screw in there. And I changed my mind to a screw instead of a bolt. We're going to use those big number 14 screws because I just don't think these are big enough to drill out for like a quarter inch or three eighths inch, three eighths inch bolt. So I think a number 14 should do the trick. So now if we pop this off, then we can spread a little bedding compound and then screw it in and then move our way up to the top. We put an unthickened coat of epoxy on each mating surface and then we add a uh, thickened coat of epoxy and it's thickened with silica and the silica will help the epoxy fill any gaps that there might be and it also adds structural strength to the adhesive. All that's left to do now is to clean out the squeeze out and then we'll come back later and install some uh, galvanized screws just to reinforce the assembly. But you can see what we're after here and bringing this frame out flush with our center supports. And what that's going to allow is once we complete the other side is that when we attach our plywood to this bulkhead here, it will make for one coplanar surface all the way across the frame. And it will tie everything from the frame beams to the deck beams all together. It'll make for a very robust assembly once it's reinforced with the plywood, glue, and screws.
Um, as far as the engine goes, um, our engine supplier is actually right in the middle of the hurricane that's going through North Carolina. Um, so I sent them a quick email before the storm arrived to say that, you know, we were praying for their state and, you know, obviously the engine thing is the least of their concerns, at uh, least of our concerns. We just hope everybody makes it out safe, uh, that their property is spared as much as possible. Um, so, you know, we'll have more information on that as we move forward. Uh, we also want to let everybody know that we do uh, love hearing from people, so you can leave a comment below or you can send us an email at contact at cdreamerproject.com. Uh, we hope that you'll go over and check us out on Facebook and on Instagram. Make sure you like our pages so that you can follow along as we work in real time. And as always, like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time.